And now, getting on for 10,000 feet up, the forest is beginning to thin. In summer, there's not much rain here, for most of it has fallen at lower altitudes. In winter, it gets extremely cold. Those conditions don't suit rhododendrons. Here, only conifers flourish in large numbers. High though we are, the Kaligandaki is still a very broad river. Remarkably, and indeed mysteriously, it doesn't rise from the flanks of these giant mountains, but cuts right through them. The people of the foothills have long since recognised the value of this extraordinary corridor that leads right through the Himalayas. And all summer, trains of mules trudge up the valley, taking barley and buckwheat to trade with Tibetans for wool and salt. All the way up the valley, there are villages where the muleteers can stay and rest. But during the summer, few do so. Most trudge tirelessly upwards for as long as there's daylight. A lammergeier, the bearded vulture, a mountain bird that soars around the high valleys of Asia and still in a few remote parts of Europe, but nowhere higher than this. And a sign that now we are getting really high, snowcock. Its dappled white plumage gives it good camouflage against the broken snow that even now in summer can fall at these altitudes. They forage for seeds and rootlets in the thin turf. 